Hi, I'm John Miller. I'm a GT racer in IMSA SRO at the Nürburgring, Kerventic races, Asian Le Mans, all over the world. Uh, I also coach in the Ferrari Challenge Series, both in the US and abroad. We're here today at CXC's headquarters in the Motion Pro 2 simulator. And today's lessons will apply to any simulator, but especially to those who are CXC owners. First things first, you wanna have a nice high quality setup. And what does that mean? It, well, it's a few things like having a high quality direct drive steering wheel that gives you a lot of feedback, a lot of feel. Then you, next, you wanna have really good pedals, it gives you good braking feel and feedback, good throttle feel. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to get a turnkey package with somebody like CXC Simulations in this Motion Pro 2. So once you get into the sim, you wanna make sure that your seating position is correct. And there's a couple different things you wanna pay attention to once you sit down. So first thing, you wanna adjust the pedals to where you have a nice bend in your knee and you're able to get full extension, full brake pressure, full throttle and clutch usage without your legs being extended too far. You want your arms to be able to reach the wheel. I kind of measure it by putting my arms straight out and making sure my wrists break over the wheel. This is actually maybe a little too close for me. I'll push it a little further away. There we go. And then just making sure that you have full range of motion on the wheel from lock to lock. Clutch, brake, and throttle, all appropriate with a little bit of bend in the knee, and I'm ready to go. All right, so up next, if you're on a CXC Motion Pro 2 or any other sim with a seatbelt tensioner, make sure your seatbelts are nice and tight and adjusted correctly, just like in the real race car. Tighten them down, shoulder belts, lap belts, and good to go. So next up, if you're on a sim with motion adjustability, make sure that it's adjusted correctly for your preferences. Second, we've got brake pressure. Again, adjust to your taste. And finally, the vibration setting. Adjust to your taste and your preference settings. What you may like may not work for your friend and vice versa. So I recommend taking a few minutes to play with these, uh, test out a few different settings and find what works for you. Next up, choose a steering wheel. Make sure it's the one appropriate for the car you're driving in the sim. If you're on a CXC sim and you wanna share your data and your telemetry with your teammates or with your sim coach, all you need to do is push this VB sim button right here. Next up, before you jump into a session in iRacing, you wanna set the track conditions and the weather. You have a few different things you can play with here, like humidity, temperature, wind speed, time of day, and starting track state. One way to do it is also to set the track state and weather to be completely static so that it doesn't change throughout the session. Now, this isn't natural to how you would actually drive because obviously the weather and the track state changes throughout the day in real life. However, it's a good way to get a baseline for a car and a track that you've never driven before or that you haven't driven in, in a while. Once you've got a good baseline and you're kind of in the window, then I would go in and create weather conditions that are likely to match the weather conditions of the real life event that you plan on racing. So if you're gonna be racing in the morning, set the weather conditions to match the time of day. And if you're gonna be racing there in, in the summer, you want the temperature to be a little higher, those kinds of things. So you can create uh, the environment that you want within iRacing before you go and drive. And if you find that it's not working for you, you can always jump out and make a change to those track conditions, but it's all doable within iRacing. The next thing to adjust is the force feedback strength. Now that will vary from car to car in real life, just as it'll vary in the sim. You can adjust it via the bar there in the force feedback settings on the menu. And you wanna find something that matches the real life car based on uh, it, whether it has power steering, uh, adjustable power steering or no power steering at all. And again, this is kind of to your taste and to your preference. Uh, and you can really make this, the wheel difficult to turn with more force feedback or easier to turn to mimic power steering with a lower force feedback setting. So moving on to car setup. Now, we are racing the 488 GT3 Evo in iRacing because we don't have the Ferrari Challenge car specifically, so we have to try and do some things to this car to make it match or at least approach the feeling of a Challenge car. Some of the things we can do are to adjust the brakes. So what we do is we dial the brake bias forward and we raise the ABS settings. We can also add some weight to the car in iRacing. On the top right there, you see weight penalty. You can add some weight to the 48 GT3. 
and that will affect the car's balance in the corners and it will elongate the brake zones in the GT3 car uh, to mimic more like what you have in the Challenge car. Unfortunately, we can't add horsepower to the GT3 car in iRacing. Uh, obviously, the 488 Challenge car has quite a bit of horsepower, but we're really trying to mimic the brake feel and the handling feel. So we, we like to add weight. We like to adjust the brake pressure settings on the bias and the ABS by increasing those uh, with a lot of front bias and some extra ABS settings. We can also do things like raise the car up a bit, uh, do some things to take away some of the grip in the corners by raising the ride height, softening the spring rates, things like that. So again, we're trying to mimic more of what the 48 Challenge car feels like by detuning the 48 GT3 a bit and uh, making the braking feel and the, the handling mimic more like what the Challenge car is like. Now, again, it's a bit of a compromise here, but uh, there are some things we can do. And we've created a setup that we think really uh, gets pretty close. And so if you want to download that, it's in the, the link is in the description below. Today's lesson in the uh, Ferrari Challenge Sim Series is here at Road America, one of my favorite tracks in the whole world. Let's go for a bit of a track walk. So exiting pit lane here, very long straightaway. That's the name of the game here, Road America, long straightaways and fast corners. So we'll move over online here real quick just to show you. Entrance of turn one is gonna be a third gear corner, about a 90 degree right hand corner here. Really get down on the curb, use as much as you can. And again, the track out, flow the speed through that corner. You'll be on the gas uh, about at the apex and then tracking out all the way, getting ready. So for the brake zone here for turn two, if you look on the left side of the road here, you've got some brake markers, uh, the three board, then you've got the break in the wall, and then you've got the two board just beyond there. There's a white line in the road as well. The break point is gonna be right kind of before the two marker, maybe right about where you're perpendicular with the uh, the break in the wall there. And that should translate pretty well to, uh, to real life. We'll go from fifth gear down to third. It's kind of a downhill break zone here. So just to be mindful, you don't get in there too late. Uh, it, it is easy to kind of understeer wide at the apex here, and then you're late to throttle, and then you really lose a lot of speed down this next long straightaway here. You can really use all the track out curb there, and then some. And up to full throttle under the Sargento Bridge here. Great passing zone coming up. Love these long straightaways here at Road America. Can really let the uh, Stretch the legs of the cars here. Now, the track does start to bend right as you come into the brake zone here. You want to set up to the right side of the road. I'm going to stop a little bit early here to show you the reference points. Right about the three board is right where we're going to hit the brakes. As you get beyond the three board, closer to the two, the track actually dives even more of a downhill. So the, the braking does get a little tricky into this next corner. So just be mindful again that you don't brake a little too late. Uh, it is wide enough for there, be, there to be a good passing opportunity here, uh, but really uh, spend some time to really nail down your break point here, especially in, in real life. Um, as you approach the corner, you're going to be in sixth gear. You're going to be really be hauling the mail. Uh, so having a, a proper break point picked out and knowing where it is each and every time is going to be critical. <clears throat> All right, approaching the apex here, a little bit of trail break, 90 degree left-hand corner here. Early to throttle is the name of the game. You can use all the track out. Now, the curbs are a little bumpy on the exit, but something to note, actually, I should have mentioned this when I left pit lane, but um, this, the sim track uh, is a little bit inaccurate compared to the real track. Uh, just because they've repaved Road America. So nobody's driven Road America yet since the repave. Uh, it's the first time they've repaved it, I think, maybe in you know, 40 years or something like that. Uh, so the, the track surface is gonna be brand spanking new in, uh, in 2023 for everybody who drives it. If you've been there before, just keep in mind, a lot of the reference points will be the same. They've talked about how they didn't do any grading. They didn't change the profiles of any of the corners, but the pavement is all brand new. Now in the past, they had repaved sections of it, but now the entire track has been repaved. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the characteristics of the track may have changed uh, while the layout has stayed exactly the same. 
So up under the Corvette bridge here, big uphill brake zone, and then it flattens out as you get under the bridge. You gotta turn in almost before you can see it. This is one of the trickier corners here at Road America. Now, now you wanna get set up here to carry big speed through the apex here. In most cars, it's just a lift or a very light brush of the brake. You wanna use that inside curb and the outside curb here, maximizing your track width from apex all the way to the track exit here. Another downhill brake zone here, carrying a lot of speed to the previous corner. You'll be up in fourth, fifth gear, maybe even sixth gear, depending on the car. Uh, off to the right, you'll, you'll see some trees and you'll see some brake markers, the number four. You can pretty easily go past the four marker on the brakes, but then you're gonna have to try to, again, try to choose a brake marker that works for you. I find that, uh, you know, I tend to be a little bit too aggressive on the brakes here sometimes uh, in the sim, trying to find the, the absolute latest place I can go to the brakes. So what I try to remind myself is that the exit is important here as well, because it leads into a pretty high speed section. So I break maybe a car length early, somewhere around the two and a half marker here. Um, really just be mindful that I'm not in the ABS all the time uh, and blowing, back, blowing past my apex. Down to second gear, turn it in, use the apex curb to help rotate the car. We don't wanna to use too much of this track out curb, both in the sim and in reality, because you see right here, it ends pretty quickly and uh, the grass and dirt are pretty bumpy there. So you don't wanna use, uh, use too much there. Just be mindful on the exit. Come over the, uh, come under the, the Johnsonville Bratwurst sign there on full throttle as you turn in. Then right when you get to the middle of the carousel here, one of the most technical corners on the track here, you're gonna be managing understeer. So you wanna carry big entry speed, drive it into the understeer, and then you manage the understeer with a little bit of light brake, a little bit of patience on the steering wheel, get the car rotated, and then you wanna be back on full throttle before you get to this exit curb, uh, kind of the, the second apex of the carousel, if you will, here. You really you wanna try and be back on full throttle before this point, definitely in the simulator, uh, as well in the real car. So one of the, the um, one of the things you deal with in the real Ferrari Challenge car is understeer, and that's gonna be one of the corners where understeer is gonna be uh, very apparent. So be mindful on the entry that you don't overcook the front tires. It's all about the exits. Now, back up to full throttle as you exit the carousel to one of the most iconic corners in all of the country uh, at any racetrack anywhere in the world. In fact, the kink at Road America. You're gonna approach the kink full throttle, flat out, in fifth gear, top of fifth gear, maybe even sixth gear. And this is one of the scariest corners because you have to turn in with as much speed as you can muster. In the GT3 car in iRacing, it's got tons of grip. In the real car, in real life, we've got to manage the understeer again. Just like in the previous corner, if we enter with too much speed, we're going to exit with too much speed. And uh, in the carousel, we've got a little bit of extra road to play with there to manage that. In the kink, the, uh, the margin for error is, uh, is not so high. So what I would say in the real car is do a bit of a big lift, turn the, turn the car in, get the nose set. Once you feel like, okay, I'm on the right trajectory, I'm going to make my apex, then you can start rolling back into the throttle, right? Look, look where we are right here. We're gonna be fifth gear, well above probably 120 miles an hour on the gas, trusting the arrow of the car, trusting the mechanical grip of the car, trusting your eyes and your car control. Because as you exit out of here, the wall is right out to the left there. And this becomes just kind of a narrow bowling alley of sorts. And you really wanna get it right because it leads onto a long straightaway here. Track out, use the curb. You commit it to full power by the time you're at the track out get the car nice and settled, and you'll grab sixth gear and be well on your way to, uh, to a fast lap time or making a pass in the next corner if you've done the kink the right way. Beautiful scenery here at Road America. Again, one of the, the best tracks in all the world, one of my favorites that I've ever been to. I love this place so much. Setting up for a very tricky brake zone here into Canada Corner. Somewhere back about the four marker, three and a half marker on the brakes nice and hard. Don't turn in too early, but if you do get a run on somebody, you can pop to the inside. There's good grip on the inside there. Down to the curb, squeeze on the exit here, and the exit curbing here can be really bumpy, so be mindful if you're going two by two through there. If you're, if you're the guy on the outside, 
or the girl on the outside there and you, you run two by two through Canada corner and you get pushed wide, that exit curbing is extremely bumpy. So uh, just be mindful of that. It can, uh, can damage the car, can bend suspension, can pop tires, all that kind of stuff. A lot of the curbing here, a lot of the exit curbing here beyond the main curbing gets really bumpy at the exits. But again, it's gonna be a question of uh, what changed with the repave this year. So it's gonna be new for all of us. All right, now approaching the last couple corners here, carry as much speed as we can through here. This will be just a light brush of the brake, kind of a blind uphill entry. Wanna keep the car platform nice and settled through here. Squeeze on the throttle and track out all the way. I end up going you know, two tires over the white line here, maybe even four tires over the white line. This is kind of a, an access road area where it's paved, so I use it. It allows me to carry big speed through the previous corner, commit to throttle nice and early, and it keeps me protected from, uh, from being passed in the final corner by carrying a lot of speed through the previous corner. So again, final corner here at Road America. The brake reference marker, if you look over to the left here, we're kind of perpendicular with the, uh, the number three uh, on the fence. And you notice I'm kind of middle of the road here. Because I've tracked out so much in the previous corner carrying so much speed, I never really have time to get fully set up to the left for the brake zone. So that's something to be, be mindful of here. You're almost braking on a diagonal right directly towards the turn-in point from the middle of the road. You've also got the, the, uh, the pavement change in front of you here as a good reference point. But you know, going back to the fact that we know the, the track has been repaved, we're going to have to make sure that our reference points from previous times we've been here or reference points from the sim that we work on uh, still match up with reality. So I would say let's let's pick the reference point on the fence or even the uh, the advertising board that we, we just drove right under. Those kinds of things probably won't move. We can use the advertising board as a brake reference marker for the, uh, the sim session here. Brake on a diagonal all the way out here to the turn in point right where that gray curb ends. Be third gear through here and as early to full throttle as you can possibly be. We've got a big long straightaway, up towards start finish line, down towards turn one at Road America. And we cross start finish line right as we come up over the hill here. Awesome track for Ferrari Challenge, awesome track for any series, one of my favorite places to go in all the world. And uh, that's a track walk here. Let's do a couple quick laps at Road America in the Ferrari. All right, starting a lap here at Road America. Third gear through the final corner, getting set up to try and get on full throttle right at the apex, using all the track out curb here. Taking a breath on the long straightaway, getting ready to start our lap. One of the most picturesque tracks in all the land. I love this place super high speed into turn one here, just past the access road, just past the first set of cones, down a couple gears into turn one, floating big speed using a lot of curb there. Breaking just past the break in the wall here, three and a half marker, two and a half marker, down a couple gears, little wiggle at the apex there. And again, another long straightaway here to really stretch the legs of the Ferrari. Getting ready for a brake zone here. Braking super hard at, at the three marker, nice and wide. Don't turn in too early. Get all the gears, use the engine braking to slow the car down and squeeze on at the exit. Up on the Corvette bridge here, nice and tidy on the brakes. Turn it in, carry big speed, squeeze on. And big speed through here just to breathe off the gas. Back to full throttle, not even a full lift there. Break a little early here just to make sure we nail the apex. There we go, and get a good exit. Up under the Johnsonville side, carry big speed in full throttle, little lift in the middle, manage the throttle, add all the steering we can, full throttle, woo! A little bit of a wiggle as we get to the grass. A little too shallow on that entry. All right, big speed through the kink here, big commitment, just a tiny lift. I think we can do it flat next time. I don't know about in the real car, all right, another big brake zone here, big into the ABS. Using the downshifts to slow the car down. The timing of that is really critical here. Okay, big lift, 
coast, squeeze back on, big rolling speed there, use all the road and then some, break just as we get under that advertising banner there, squeeze back onto full throttle, and use all the track out curve. Here we go, one more lap at Road America, just because I love this place so much, maybe we'll do three laps. Okay, over start finish line. Getting ready to get the braking right. We're gonna go from sixth down to fourth gear here, just past the access road. One more set of cones, there we go. Down two gears, roll off the brake. Big apex speed, big curb usage. We'll brake a little later here, down towards the two board. Down two gears, roll the speed. A little more tidy on the exit that time. Up under the Sargento Bridge. Track kind of winds its way to the right. Getting ready to break right about the three board, maybe a little past the three. There we go, a little deeper. A little mindful on the exit here. Probably could have braked a little later than that. Just trying to hit my marks. Under the Corvette Bridge, down one gear, turn it in, a little bit of understeer. What a nice exit. A lot of speed through here. Barely lifted that time. Down a little deeper on the brakes this time. And a nice exit still. All right, big speed through the carousel this time. There we go, a little bit faster through the middle. Kind of got the understeer there, you saw. Now we're gonna try and go big speed through the kink this time. Oh boy, that was flat, almost flat. I think I lifted just a hair. It was faster than last time though. Love that corner so much. Here we go, final corner into Canada corner, big on the brakes, big ABS. Squeeze on the throttle. Carried third gear that time, we'll carry fourth gear through this next corner. Little lift, back to flat, use all the road, up under the banner, on the brakes a little bit later, down to third gear, trail the brake, and then commit to full throttle nice and early. Runner all the way up the white line here, up to the start finish line. Long straightaways, fast sweeping corners. That's Road America for you. I don't know if I said it before, but I love this place. So some final thoughts about Road America. As I mentioned before, the track has been completely resurfaced for 2023. So the simulator doesn't reflect that yet. It's gonna be kind of new for everybody. What you can learn from the sim is the track layout, the flow, and some of the off-track reference points, the speeds you need to carry, the gearing. Um, again, this place, high speed corners, lots of commitment. It's kind of old school, long straightaways. Um, it's, a, it's a very special track. They don't build race tracks like Road America anymore. So spend the extra time in the simulator, learn the off-track reference points, learn, learn the flow of the place, learn the feel of it. None of that's gonna change this year with the repave, but uh, the grip level might change, some of the curbs might change, stuff like that you need to be mindful of, but there's still a ton of value to spending some time on the simulator to get to know this place a little bit and really get confident in the high-speed corners, managing the understeer, knowing what to expect as the tires age, getting your brake reference points down, all those kinds of things. So enjoy Road America, it's one of my favorites.